Well guys, here we are again. Another week means another and or review and it means me simply gushing about how good this show is again because Andor does not miss. 10 episodes in now and this episode was just as brilliant as all of the others. There are some spoilers ahead so you have been warned. So the real star of episode 10 in Andor is without a doubt Andy Serkis. His performance as Kino Loy in this episode is absolutely phenomenal and that is where we start. It starts off right where we left it last week with Kino grappling with the thought of having to fight back against the Empire. In last week's episode we ended it with him opening up to the idea of helping this prison breakout and we start this episode with him knowing what he has to do, knowing that he has to stand up for himself and the people that he is leading. But he has spent all of this time trying to do the right thing, trying to do it lawfully, trying to serve his time properly and he is struggling to come to terms with the fact that he has to go against this and some of the writing for Kino, especially the dialogue between the characters in this week's episode, is just sensational. And I keep saying it every single week because the dialogue really hasn't slipped up once, it has been exceptional through and through. And like I said, Andy Serkis's performance, oh, not only his ability to emote with just his expressions alone, but the sheer potency in which he delivers his dialogue, the emotive nature in which he manages to make every word convey feeling. He is just such a good actor, probably one of the most underappreciated actors of the past generation. But we spend the first few minutes of this episode delving into Kino's thought process and ultimately accepting what needs to be done in this moment. He is the leader of this group and this group will follow him if he is the one to give them the guidance they need, not Cassian. And then we have this quick interlude section with Deidre and the ISB. There isn't too much in this section, it is just plot progression. They manage to bait out one of the rebel leaders, Krieger, and they're just discussing next steps. Again, good dialogue, well written, nothing particularly stand out to talk about though. We then jump straight back into the prison and this is pretty much where the entire episode focuses itself. After sleeping on his thoughts, Kino wakes up with intent. He decides, okay, I have to be real now, I can't keep living in this fantasy. And he tells everyone, yeah, listen, we are screwed, we're never getting out, we're going to die here if we don't band together and do something about it. And this spurs everybody on. Everybody is now on the same wavelength, they know something's got to be done. And during the next work shift, they're waiting for a new prisoner to be brought in, because sadly the older member of the group died in the last episode, and this is where they strike. However, just before they do that, Cassian cuts open some kind of valve behind a wall, and leaks a load of water into their workroom. Somehow the guards don't notice this at all, but when the new guard brings in the new guy, they essentially all start throwing stuff at him and Cassian manages to jam the elevator so they start climbing it. And then the guards start shooting everybody. It was just chaotic. I love the set piece of this action. It is very intense but also very claustrophobic at the same time. This is when the guards decide to electrocute the floors and try to kill everybody to stop this uprising. But obviously the water, which was the whole point of that little subsection of the story short circuits the room's floor and this is where they all make a charge for the elevator and they all get out most of them anyway there were a few characters here and there who died but i will touch upon that a little bit later now they've made it pretty evident throughout the past two episodes that this prison is pretty short staffed and there is barely anybody to stop this riot. They are ultimately overwhelmed, they take all of the guns and everybody's just barreling through this facility, going to the other floors, freeing other sections of the prison. But even though they have done that, a lot of these prisoners are just kind of unsure if they want to get involved. They know what will happen if they decide to join this uprising and they're all a little bit cautious. But Cassian and Kino manage to find their way to the command centre and they manage to take control and get on the intercom and this is where Kino really gets some exceptional dialogue. And it is capped off, like I said, by a performance that is utterly brilliant. The way emotions are conveyed through this monologue for Kino by Andy Serkis is just mwah, so good. 
He has been spending all of this time in this prison leading these group of men to do the bidding of the Empire so that they can free themselves when the time comes. But when it comes to trying to convince this whole facility to rise up and fight, he doesn't know what to say. He's always been loud and full of words, that is the character we've come to know, but in this moment, he is hesitant, he is nervous, he doesn't know if he is going to say the right thing. But Cassian convinces him, you know, this is what you do, and then he just delivers an absolutely amazing, amazing monologue about there being only one way out of this prison and how they have to rise up and fight and protect each other so they can all get out. And it was, it was almost spine chilling how powerful this monologue was. It was so, so damn good. Cassian and Kino then open everything from the command center. They shut down all of the security measures and literally everybody in the facility decides, right, let's escape, and they're all rushing towards the exit, but they don't really know where or what that exit is. Then we have another small scene with Mon Mothma, again, brilliantly acted, brilliantly written. It reminded me a little bit of Game of Thrones, actually. The guy that she needs to help her move her money around without being noticed essentially says, look, if you want my help, you have to marry my son to your daughter because you're in a position of power. And Mon Mothma is utterly enraged by this. All you have to do is look at her face. She is furious. They've made it very evident throughout this show that she shows a lot of disdain towards Chandrillan customs and traditions that she has been forced to go ahead with, especially her marriage, which she isn't happy with. And she is totally against the idea of putting her daughter through the same thing. But this is something she desperately needs for the rebellion. And she is totally conflicted in what she needs to do. Does she use her daughter or does she support her daughter's freedoms? It is an extremely good conflict for this character to have in this moment. It will show her dedication either to her family or to the rebellion. And it will make that character of Mon Mothma become the one that we know. And it is capped off again by a brilliant performance from Genevieve O'Reilly. Her facial acting is so good. Her line delivery is brilliant and you can feel the conflict in her heart and her anger just through, like I said, that facial acting, her facial expression. She didn't even need words to showcase what she was feeling. Now, there's also a small little scene on Ferrix. I didn't feel this was very important to anything. It was like a little a bit of filler, uh, if I can say anything about it. It was like a little breather from the prison. And then we go back to the prison. Everybody is gunning for the exit. But there isn't one. We've had this incredible uprising, we've had these powerful character moments, and when they finally reach the exit, it is just endless ocean. No ships, no bridges, no nothing. But all of these guys know that they're gonna die either way, and they would rather die on their own terms than in the prison, so literally everybody just dives into the ocean and starts swimming for their lives. But it's revealed that Kino can't swim. The most coincidental thing I have ever seen. Like, I knew this was coming as soon as they showed the ocean. And although Cassian wants to stay behind and find another way, he is bundled over the edge as the crowd pushes their way out and Kino is left behind. And then to cap off this week's episode, we learned that there is indeed a rat within the ISB and he is working for Luthen, but he doesn't want to do it anymore. He has a family to look after. And I am like a broken record when I say this, but it is just another exceptional scene where the dialogue carries it, as do the performances. To start it off, he is going up an elevator talking to Luthen on an earpiece and both the performances are exceptional, as is the set piece itself. It feels extremely tense at all points. Every single moment in this elevator just feels uncomfortable and that is on purpose. And then the elevator stops and it gets to the top and Luthen is just standing there with his cape looking all menacing uh, on this kind of overpass looking over the underbelly of Coruscant. And then you guess what happens next, guys. It is an exceptional bit of dialogue, an exceptional discussion between these two characters that is brilliantly performed. 
The agent says he's sacrificed enough, he's given so much of his life to infiltrating the Empire and leaking all of this information that he doesn't want to do it anymore because of his family. But Luthen explains that it's never going to end, there is no escape, and he is riled up, really riled up when the agent says, what have you sacrificed like me? To which Luthen goes on an incredible rant about how he has sacrificed literally everything in his entire life. And the delivery and the performance and the writing, honestly sensational. He tells the agent there's no leaving, he doesn't have a choice, and he basically sends him back down the elevator and says, shut up, do your duty, and then the episode ends with Cassian and Melshi running on a beach off into the dark of night. And that caps off what is a brilliant episode of this show. I love the design of the prison. It is so dystopian and just the perfect backdrop for this whole scenario. The visuals are good. The action of the breakout was fun, but it wasn't over the top. The riot felt natural, as did the reaction of the guards who were all hiding away in like a cupboard because they do they couldn't do anything. And it is definitely one of the standout episodes of this show. My only real criticism of the episode is that there wasn't an emotional connection of any real kind for the majority of the people in the prison. As I said earlier, there are quite a few people die that we have seen in a few episodes now, but I said the same thing last week and the same thing happened today. Aside from Kino, there's no real time given to any of these characters that make you feel sad about their deaths or make you feel anything really when they die. Which is in stark contrast to the Aldani heist where they really did focus on all of the members of the group. Even Melshi, who is an actual character in Rogue One, so not a nobody or a new character, feels like a missed opportunity here. It's like Andor is saying, well, you know this character from Rogue One, so we don't need to do anything with him. And then he just feels kind of empty, but he is always on the screen as if we are being told that we know him all the time. This is my only real criticism. If they had given any kind of level of the amount of attention or the amount of exquisite dialogue given to Kino to Melshi, then I wouldn't really have any complaints, but I just feel like there was a missed opportunity with that character. But other than that, honestly, an exceptional episode. I am so, so sad that it is coming to an end in two weeks' time. Every episode has been awesome for nearly ten weeks now. I don't know how they're going to close this show out or what they are going to do. It is very evident that we do need a second season to really delve into those character arcs that have been established throughout the show, such as Deidre and Cyril and Merva and whatnot, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how they leave us on a cliff edge in the coming penultimate and final episodes. As always, if you enjoyed the review, don't forget to hit the like button, it helps me out a great deal. And if you haven't, perhaps consider subscribing so you are notified for next week's review of Andor when it goes live. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.